Good morning, YouTube or book world or mankind. This is Johnny. Time to make a video. I just looked at my YouTube channel. It's only been 15 hours since I made a video. It seems like a long, long time ago. But the house is quiet. It is early morning here in West, Southwest Michigan. It is 7.18 in the morning on October the 18th, 2018. And it's supposed to be a, a sunny day. Kind of chilly, but sunny. And I really should go and get more bird food. Uh, but tell you the truth right now, I don't want to go anywhere but I don't know. My wife is off the next four days. Maybe one of those four days we'll drive over to the place we buy bird food. It's a seed store. They, it's like they sell bird food and you know things to fertilize your lawn and you know, seeds for gardens and, you know, all that kind of things. Bird, you know, bird feeders and all kinds of things. Anyway, I, I thought I'd make a video. So I got to wake up here. <laughs> I got up at 5 to 6. And I don't know why I got up so early. Uh, my mind was just speeding. Uh, my wife says I never relax. My mind is always going, 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 going. I think too much. I'm too I need to I need to spread my wings and do something else besides read books and write and read books and write and read books and write. But this morning I woke up and I got out uh off my study desk, my main study desk the the works of uh, Ezekiel Hopkins, which is falling apart. <laughs> These things are so fragile. Which volume is this one? This is volume one. Pieces of it just crumbling. But with me, when I get a book, as long as I can read it, I don't care if it's the cover is falling apart or... One thing I don't like about getting a book, a used book, if it's underlined or has notes in it, I definitely it bugs me. And, uh, I just don't like reading underlined books. Now, if there's just a few underlines in annotations or things in the on the margins, it doesn't really bother me. But so uh, so I got up this morning, got out the f four volumes of the works of Ezekiel Hopkins. Yesterday, I read this all day yesterday. Well, I didn't read the one I mentioned in my video, which was The Excellency of Heavenly Treasures. Well, the one I read yesterday was another treatise in here, or a series of sermons. I don't know, it's probably one of the things, the reason why I make this, I'm making this video, and I don't know if I've said this in past videos, that, uh, in my reading life, sometimes I get into these kind of grooves where I can read a certain book all the time, or at least for a couple of days. I'm kind of I get in a certain flow or a certain state of mind, and and then I I kind of crash. <laughs> I kind of I get to a place where I'm just I can't read anymore, or I can just read very little, or I'm not. My brain is not receptive. And right now I'm in one of those grooves where I can read a lot of spiritual material. And I am I I'm receptive. I, I, I don't feel clogged. I feel I feel opened. And so when I get into these kinds of states of being, I just read a lot of Christian literature that's on my desk because it's uh I'm enjoying it for one thing it's uh, because 
basically right now when I read the Ezekiel Hopkins who was a 17th century English Puritan it's not something I it's not something new uh, I have spent many 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 years uh, reading extensively and in depth 17th century English Puritan spirituality and theology so it always kinds of amazes me when I can read something like that you know read 17th century English Puritan theology and spirituality and I'm enjoying it because there are times when I can't I just said you know I've read this and this is not new and this is just you know this is old bread <laughs> but right now I seem to be in some kind of spiritual state mentally spiritually emotionally intellectually where I can read this and I'm enjoying it <clears throat> but I fully realize there's gonna come a day when I'm just gonna crash and I won't be able to read uh, 17th century English Puritan spirituality or read Reformed theology or Biblical theology or New Testament theology and then I have to read something else and like I've said usually when I get into those kinds of states when I start crashing I read books on Christian spirituality, books on prayer, books on contemplation, or I just read uh, some commentary, I just read small portions of scripture. But, um, so yeah, so I read <clears throat> The Almost Christian Dis Discovered by Ezekiel Hopkins. I read that all day, off and on when I wasn't wandering the house or on the computer or talking to my wife or feeding the birds or dozing and uh, so I don't know I read the almost Christian discovered yesterday but uh, yeah this is in volume three of the works of Ezekiel Hopkins and I just thought I'd show you what's in the other volumes of the works of Ezekiel Hopkins. This is volume four. What you have in volume four is uh, death disarmed of its sting from several con considerations. And then you have miscellaneous sermons in volume four. Like I said, this was published in 1809. It was published in 1809 in London. London, England. Somehow I got into Western Theological Seminary here in West Michigan. I don't know how old Western Theological Seminary is. It's at least a hundred years old. So yeah, these are miscellaneous sermons here in this volume. This is volume two. See, it's just falling apart. <laughs> uh, is You have in here Discourses on the law, discourses concerning sin, the folly of sinners and making mock of sin, the great evil and danger of little sins, of abstaining from the appearance of evil, nature, dangers, and abrogations, and cure of presumptuous sinning, the dreadfulness of God's wrath against sinners, the pardon and forgiveness of sin, and what else here? The doctrine of the two covenants, the doctrine of the sacraments, the nature and necessity of regeneration or the new birth. It's just falling apart. <laughs> it's falling apart. I don't know when I last looked at these. It was a long time ago. And then this is in volume one, which is uh, the vanity of the world, Practical Exposition of the Lord's Prayer, a Catechetical Exposition on the Lord's Prayer by way of question and answer, an Exposition of the Ten Commandments, uh, yeah, so that's what's in volume one. So it's just all basically practical 
17th century English Puritan spirituality, theology. So I was reading those yesterday. These scriptures come to my mind. I, I was thinking this morning before I start making this video of Psalm 119 came to my mind. I don't know where it just came to my mind and I was looking at Psalm 119 is the large, the longest psalm in the Old Testament. It is 176 verses, but I thought I'd just read these verses from Psalm 119 in the Old Testament. It starts at verse 27. Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. You, through your commandments, make me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients, because I keep your precepts. I have restrained my feet from every evil way, that I may keep your word. I have not departed from your judgments, for you yourself have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than to my mouth, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your precepts I get understanding. Therefore I, I hate every false way. I like that verse. How sweet are your words to my taste. So yeah, so I, those verses came to my mind this morning. On October the 18th, 2018, I'm on page 856 in my 2018 diary. We're coming to the end of the year. How many days we have left in this year? We have 74 more days in the year 2018. I thought I'd show you uh, also the other day uh, my wife and I went out to Lake Michigan. We went out to lunch at a place called the Beach House. Had a really nice meal, a good time together of just enjoying one another. It always amazes me after all these many years of marriage to Carol that we still enjoy being with one another and talking and just doing things together and um, friendship, companionship, love. It's a wonderful thing, uh, marriage. But she wanted to stop. You know, I didn't want to go to a thrift store because, like I said, I'm cutting back on buying used books. Uh, so, but my wife wanted to stop at this thrift store before we came home to look at stuff, and so I got these used books uh, at this thrift store. I got this. Uh, the name is Archer. This is a Ross McDonald crime fiction. I have one other of these and I've read that he was a very great crime writer. So I got, this is Ross McDonald. He's published, oh, countless. I have his one, The Drowning Pool. It's the only one I have by him. I got this in the mail a couple of days ago. This is a used book, Why I Read, the, the Serious Pleasure of Books, Wendy Lesser. This is what I've been reading when I'm not reading my Christian books primarily. Uh, so I've been reading this. I also got this at uh, the thrift store, Quiet, The Power of Introverts in a World That Can't Stop t Talking by Susan Cain. When I cataloged this book and library thing, 6,000 people had this book. So it must be very popular. And then I picked up at the thrift store. Uh, this is Ellen Gelchris. This is Nora Jane, A Life and Stories. I collect the writings of Ellen Gelchris. I have her short stories and novels. She uh, is a National Book Award winner. I got this at the Book Nook when I volunteered last Monday. This is a memoir, Firebird, a memoir by Mark Dalty. This is the coming of age of a of a of, of a. It says here uh, 
And Firebird, this is on the back here, describing this memoir by Mark Doty. Doty? Doty? Uh, and Firebird, Mark Doty tells a story of a 10-year-old boy in a top hat, cane, and red chiffon scarf, interrupted while belting out Judy Garland's Get Happy by his alarmed mother at the bedroom door, exclaiming, Son, you're a boy! Firebird presents us with an heroic little boy who has quite enough worries without discovering that his daunting sexuality is the wrong one. A self-confessed, chubby, smart, bookish sissy with glasses and a southern accent, Doty grew up on the move, the family following his father's engineering work across America, from Tennessee to Arizona, Florida to California, a lyrical, heartbreaking comedy of one family's dissolution through the corrosive powers of alcohol, sorrow, and thrafted desires. Firebird is also a wiry invocation of childhood's pleasures and terrors, a comic turd of American suburban life, and a testament to the transformative power of art. Yeah, I looked at this at the book, Nuck, and I, you know, I looked at it and I put it back. I looked at it and I put it back. But as I was, I was at the book, Nuck, and I was reading it, and it's very well written. It's a, it's just really well written memoir, very lyrical, poetic. Uh, it's kind of funny, kind of sad, but I like memoirs, as you guys all know. So I got this, and then I got from my free book. As I mentioned, I've been reading about the Kennedys, uh, John F. Kennedy, uh, Jacqueline Kennedy. This is the private grace and power, the private world of the Kennedy White House, great uh, by Sally Bendel, Bedell, Bedell Smith. And uh, yeah, I've been reading this little bits and pieces of it. And then I got at the thrift store. Uh, this is in Gig in Gig Bay in Ingla Bay by Sebastian Folks. I collect his writings, and I didn't have this one. Well, I thought I had it in paperback, and when I went down there the other day just to look at my collection of Sebastian Folks writings, I didn't have this one. I must have misplaced it somewhere. But this is a novel. He's a British writer. Uh, Sebastian Fuchs works as a journalist, worked as a journalist for 14 years before taking up writing full time in 1991. In 1995, he was voted Author of the Year by the British Book Awards for Birdsong, his fourth novel and his second following, A Fool's Alphabet, to be published in the United States. He's the author of Human Traces, The Green Dolphin Street, Charlotte Gray, The Fatal Englishman, and The Girl at the Lion Dior. He lives in London with his wife and three children. This was published, and I think this is a this was published in two thousand seven. So I collect his novels, but I don't think I've ever read them. But. Uh, When, when I look through his novels, they look very... I want to read them someday. That's why I collect them. So that's what I got at Thrift Stores. A novel by Sebastian Fox and Ingleby. And Grace and Power, The Private World of Kennedy White House by Sally Bedell Smith. A memoir by Mark Dotty, or Dotty Firebird. Uh, Alan Galchrist, Nor Jane, A Life and Stories, A Cultural Study on Quiet by Susan Cain, A Crime Detective Little Novel by Ross McDonald, who's very famous. I think he wrote for The New Yorker, too. Uh, I'm not, I can't remember for sure. But this was published in 1955. In reading the works of the English Puritan, Ezekiel Hopkins, 
the almost Christian discovered reading when I'm not reading my Christian books, why I read The Serious Pleasure of Books by Wendy Lesser, writing in my diary, reading the Bible, and just flowing on the death flow. So that's it. I can put these used books down the lower level in, their, in my different collections. Uh, today is a Thursday. I don't know what I'm going to do today. It's supposed to be sunny. Like I said, I should go get bird food, but I don't know. It gives me the creeps thinking about leaving the house. My wife is off Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. This, this, this evening, we're going down the street to my oldest son's house with his wife, Emily, and our two granddaughters, Josie Joy and little Coralie, for dinner. Might watch some, I don't know. We can do that this evening. My wife is having breakfast with old girlfriends, nurse girlfriends this morning, so she'll be home late. So I'm just sitting here talking into this camera to the to my subscribers, to booktubers, to humanity. And yeah, so tomorrow's a Friday. I go back to the book nook tomorrow. Maybe something good will come into the book nook. Some history, biography, memoir, short stories, essays, some good art books. Who knows? So uh, thank you for the comments. Thank you for the subscribers. I really hope you're doing well today. And until next time, bye.